Good morning. I am running a little behind because I thought this place was closer than it is. That it was an eight minute walk. It's an 18 minute walk. So getting in a little cardio before we go for a cold plunge. I feel like in the past year, cold plunges have become a very highly recommended form of recovery for people across the board. So today what we're going to do is not only talk about it based off of the different research, based off of what your goals might be, based off of what your needs are, what your accessibility is to cold plunging. But the cherry on top of today's video is that I am actually trying. I also have to say two things. Number one, this was a gifted session to me at Forte in Astoria. I have never been here, but I've heard their space is pretty cool, so I'm excited to check it out today. And number two, I am very reluctantly doing this. I love winter, but I hate being cold with nothing to do about it, <laughs> if that makes sense. So we are going to suffer through this together, and then throughout my day today, we will talk a little bit more about the details of cold plunging, but let's make our way to the studio before we're late. All right, here is the recovery room. So we actually have a sauna, which I am definitely taking advantage of after because I'm going to be freezing. And here's the little cold plunge area. We got some vibes. There's a shower. So I guess we're just going to get changed and hop on in. Okay, let's do it. We're back. Let's chat. <clears throat> Let's chat. That was jarring, but I kind of knew it was going to be. The owner was super nice. She actually offered to coach me through the cold plunge, but I knew I was going to be such a wuss. I was like, no, I'm good. I just want to do it by myself. I lasted for about 20 seconds, which is kind of pathetic, but... <laughs> I can still say that I tried. So what I want to do as we go throughout the day is not only talk about the benefits, but also some of the takeaways from different studies that have been emerging more recently. So let's start with the benefits. There are three main ones that I've seen claimed. The first is better ability to cope with stress. The theory is by deliberately exposing yourself to stress in the form of submerging your body in cold water, then you're able to become more resilient when you experience stressful situations day to day. The next benefit is increased metabolism. Metabolism. Some studies have shown that with the addition of cold plunging, participants burn more calories at rest throughout their day. And then finally, you see the claim of reduced inflammation and soreness. Cold temperatures can help constrict blood vessels and aid in faster recovery, so a lot of people have started to use cold plunging to achieve that. Now keep in mind, I am not an expert on this. I've obviously only tried it once, and this just isn't like my forte. It's funny because that's the name of the gym I was just at. <laughs> But like I said, there have been some more recent studies talking about not only these benefits with cold plunging, but who it actually could be used for. So we're gonna keep on moving. I have kind of a busy day. It's all kind of spread out. I have a client in about an hour at 11. Then I have another one at one. Then I have another one at three, four. And then I have my dance cardio class at 5.30 tonight. So we're gonna jump right into the day. We'll come back here around two. That sounds good. And we'll talk a little bit more about just like my takeaways based off of all of the different studies that have come out on cold plunging. So Let's go.
Okay, it's about two o'clock. I have an hour till my next client. And then the rest of the day is just kind of like a marathon and I do need to just finish up prepping to teach my class tonight. So we're gonna wrap up this video here with kind of some takeaways. I wanna expand a little bit on each of the benefits that we talked about earlier and just kind of my interpretation of them as a coach, as somebody who works with general population. So the first benefit was increasing your ability to cope with stress. I do understand where this benefit is coming from, but couldn't you kind of do this with anything that's stressful? Couldn't you just like stand on the edge of your roof for two minutes and then step back? Like, isn't it just kind of fight or flight? You will get that same dopamine surge or response afterwards. Now, obviously I don't want you to do that. <laughs> and there's obviously other benefits that are claimed with cold plunging that would not come from standing on your roof for two minutes. But if you feel like you're someone who doesn't cope with stress well, instead of jumping right to cold plunging, I would probably recommend something that's a little bit more feasible and realistic in your day-to-day -day schedule. You could try things like meditation, yoga, maybe a calming activity like playing an instrument, maybe doing something like knitting, God, you could even like play a mindless game like Animal Crossing, I don't know. But for most people, having access to a cold plunge is an added expense. And I don't typically like recommending things to people that are an added expense. <laughs> when you probably have a variation of it that is free to you and fits better in your schedule. So I would personally recommend exhausting those other options before jumping into investing and going to some place with a cold plunge. The next benefit that was talked about was increasing your metabolism or your metabolic rate. Essentially essentially meaning that you are gonna be able to burn more calories at rest than if you did not do cold plunging. The science behind this one does get a little tricky. Before I even jump into it, this is technically true. The claim of increasing your metabolism comes from some studies that indicate cold weather exposure can increase your brown fat or brown adipose tissue. This tissue keeps you warm when you're cold by storing energy and then burning it to regulate your body temperature. That's a really nice condensed version of what's going on but for the purpose of this video, that is like enough to understand. And also there's a specific reason why I don't want to dive too deep into that. And it's because it's probably more advanced than most people need. If you're someone who wants to increase how many calories you're burning at rest, you probably have a weight loss goal. And if you have a weight loss goal, there are a number of things that I would recommend you focus on and really nail and perfect before you add in cold plunging. How's your nutrition? How's your sleep? How's your stress? How many steps do you take in a day? Do you strength train? You can't run to the miracle cure before you've mastered the basics because it's not a miracle cure. The amount of energy that you are going to burn extra, like with this increase in metabolic rate, it's not enough to outweigh these foundational things and it's not enough to make a huge difference. I talked about this with a lot of other marketing, things around epoch, extra, excess post oxygen consumption. Is that right? Orange theory promotes that a lot. Another one you hear a lot is muscle burning more calories at rest than fat. And while that is true because muscle does take more energy to maintain, the amount of calories isn't gonna be anything crazy. So instead of focusing on these little things that might just seem like the answer to all of your problems, the answer is actually probably far more simple than you think. Eating balanced, colorful meals made up of minimally processed foods, sleeping seven to nine quality hours each night, aiming for seven to 8,000 steps daily, getting in two to three strength workouts a week. If you can stick to those things consistently for a year and you still can't lose any weight, then I would recommend working with a doctor. But if then you do wanna add in cold plunging, I would maybe throw it out there, but I want you to hear me out in this very last point. Reduction in inflammation. I feel like this became a really big thing with like the gut health trend in 2023. All of a sudden, everyone's chronically bloated. All of a sudden, everyone has chronic inflammation. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that those things aren't real because they absolutely are. And this isn't the video to dive into it, but I will say if you are someone suffering with those things, you probably wanna work with a doctor and not listen to influencers who just pose pushing their belly out. Anyway, I feel like this is the biggest claim that I see being thrown out there. And it's actually the one that while it is true, I think it's kind of the most harmful. And let's talk about it. So cold plunges have been shown to reduce inflammation in the body, which you might think is a great thing. And 
I think it's only a great thing in certain circumstances. We'll talk about which circumstances I think cold plunges are appropriate for to reduce inflammation, but let's talk about why I don't think it's a good option for most people. There's actually studies coming out showing that cold plunges inhibit muscle growth and strength gains. Why? Because inflammation is necessary for that adaptation to occur. Keeping this as simple as possible so we're all on the same page, post-workout you have created micro tears in your muscles and you need that inflammation to occur as your body repairs to help rebuild your muscles. If you don't have that inflammation, your body is simply going to recover but not build. Now you might be sitting here and thinking, well, I don't wanna build any muscle. I don't really care about my strength. I just wanna lose weight. Well. Having a little bit more muscle on your body is actually going to help you with that weight loss goal. Yes, we already talked about the fact that technically muscle does require more energy than fat does to maintain on the body. Again, it's very minuscule, but having some more muscle in your body is going to help naturally regulate a lot of the hormonal processes within your body. Along with having adequate sleep, adequate nutrition, can you just see a theme here? So in what circumstances would I recommend cold plunging? Professional athletes, who are in season, if you're a baseball player and you have back-to-back -back games, if you're a basketball player and have back-to-back -back games, if you're basically someone who needs to perform at 100% all-out performance and then do it again the next day, you just don't have time to be sore, right? Another great example is Broadway performers doing eight shows a week. If you're in a really physically demanding dance show or even physical comedy show, this might be a great option for you. I would also consider this for people post-marathon. You're not necessarily gonna go out and run the next day, but you probably have to function and it's probably been really tough on your body. Extreme situations of extreme output. Yeah, you've earned some extreme measures of recovery and that would be cold plunging in my opinion. So I know you're probably like, well, why did you even try it? <laughs> I tried it because it was offered to me and I think it's important to try things before I talk about them. Also like it doesn't need to be that deep. Maybe you just wanna try it. Maybe it makes you feel good every once in a while. Not everything needs to be so optimal or so black and white. If you enjoy cold plunging and you wanna keep it in your toolbox, go for it. But if you're someone who has been searching for the answers and searching for an easy fix, this is not it. If there is any other popular thing that you would like me to try out, please let me know. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and I will see you all in the next one.